Good morning class at 7.30 a.m. Now we're going to prove that the empty set star is equal to the set that contains the empty string. I think I'm on Mars. Okay, consider a language L that can be any language. Now we're going to consider the language LL, which is just the concatenation of L with itself. And that is the set of all strings WX where W and X are from L. And one thing that we'll prove is that if L is regular, then LL is also regular. Got it. So we can make an NFA for that language L because we know it's regular and epsilon transition into a second copy of that NFA. So in contrast, now we're going to look at the language uh, WW where W is in L. Wait, aren't those two the same? No, this language is not the same as this language. In fact, I just said that if L is regular, then this guy is regular, but this one is not even regular at all. Okay, so we're going to now formally show what the NFA to DFA conversion actually does. Okay, how will that be done though? So it's actually very simple. All you have to do is to look at a subset of states of the NFA on a particular symbol A, so this is what it's defined to do in the DFA. And then all you have to do is to figure out where it went in the NFA, figure out the epsilon closure of that, then take the union of all individual states in that particular set of states, and then take the epsilon closure of that. It's just completely obvious. So we're gonna be looking at the NFA to regex conversion process today. I've always wanted to do that as a kid. Anyway, we need to have an intermediate object because we can't necessarily do this directly. How does that work? So that intermediate object is called a generalized NFA, and that's more commonly abbreviated as a GNFA. How many acronyms do we need to memorize? One thing to keep in mind is how to know the difference between a pushdown automaton transition and a Turing machine transition because it's easy to get those mixed up. Can you remind us what the difference is? The PDA one, if we have a transition that looks like this, is going to be looking like A comma B goes to C where A is the thing that's being read, B is the thing that's being popped off the stack, and C is being the thing that's being pushed. So that's the PDA. And then the Turing machine version of this, the transition, is gonna be A goes to B comma C, where A is the thing being read, B is the thing being written, and C is the direction. So what you should notice is that there's an arrow over here for between the B and the C, and for the Turing machine, it's between the A and the B. Don't get these mixed up. That seems unnecessarily close. Can you make those a little different? No. Wait, why not? Because clearly everyone else does it, and therefore that's the reason why we should do it. I'm gonna head out. Okay, class, now we're gonna prove one of the most important things in the entire class, which is that the halting problem is undecidable. There's no algorithm to figure out whether a Turing machine halts on a given input. How does that work? Basically, we will assume that this thing is decidable and then get a contradiction as a result. Got it, got it, got it. Essentially, we will get a Turing machine off of this assumption that disagrees with itself. So on a particular input, it's supposed to have certain behavior and it really is doing the other behavior, so it's disagreeing with itself. How the hell is that possible? By feeding the Turing machine into itself. What? Okay, class, now we're going to look at a much easier way to show that something is undecidable. Oh, thank freaking goodness, finally. It's called Rice's Theorem. I have a hankering for Basmati. Because Turing machine recognizers can run forever, we need to introduce this idea where if we want to combine two recognizers, we don't want them to run forever in total. So we introduce this idea of dovetailing. So apparently I'm in a class called Intro Theoretical Woodworking. Okay class, today we're going to be looking at a really cool application of undecidability called the Post Correspondence Problem or PCP for short. Are we seriously learning about drugs? It turns out that a lot of proofs of undecidability can be done with PCP. The problem or the drugs? That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.